Bernoulli's equation is something that's commonly learned in high school physics class. And while it is very useful, it doesn't precisely follow what happens in the real world when we start accounting for the compressibility of fluids as well as the losses due to friction. And so if you're a chemical engineer taking a fluid mechanics course, you're going to need to be able to use Bernoulli's equation while accounting for the fact that you do have frictional losses. And so what I'm going to do in this video is account for how we can modify Bernoulli's equation to account for these losses and have more accurate models um, to describe fluid flow. And so to begin with, I've drawn out what Bernoulli's equation is. Hopefully we've seen it before. We have these terms here, which are analogs to the kinetic energy sorry for the poor handwriting, and these velocity terms are considered mass averaged velocities, and we have the potential energy of the fluid here, as well as the kind of pressure energy of a fluid um, accounted for on uh, side one and I'm going to be assuming in this example that fluid will be flowing we drew some kind of pipes like these with slightly different heights um, this is side one and this is side two and so uh, all Bernoulli's really is is it's just an energy balance And what you're essentially doing is you're summing up the, the potential, the kinetic, and the pressure energy, uh, and you're saying that that must be conserved, uh, and therefore, to account for the heat losses due to the friction in the pipe, we can include this delta P loss term uh, on the right side. And so with these quantities, what we can begin to do is to determine what delta P loss is, we're going to use uh, Moody diagrams. And I have covered that in another video uh, if you'd like to check it out. But the gist of it is we can say that delta P loss is equivalent to the friction factor, which is a number that is a function of Reynolds number as well as the pipe material. And we're going to multiply that by the length of the pipe by uh, divided by the diameter of the pipe. So length over diameter. And then we're going to multiply this by one half times rho of the fluid times the mass averaged velocity squared. And the reason we use these kind of mass averaged velocities is because it um, mass is conserved in all of our systems and that's what helps our energy balance remain intact when we're performing these kinds of analyses. And so with this information, um, we can equate these two terms now that we're successfully accounting for frictional losses. And uh, I might be able to give an example of this, but for the sake of introducing the modified Bernoulli's equation with frictional losses, this is probably a good place to end. So we can see, we can sum up, we can still apply the gist of Bernoulli's equation and slightly modify it with our pressure loss term to arrive at a more accurate model. And I hope you guys find this useful. Let me know if you have any questions and thanks for watching.